I'm going to start the program today with a warning. I reckon you should have a cup of tea and somewhere you can lie down or take a break very close at hand for the next hour or so. And I have thought long and hard, in fact, I was uh, losing sleep last night about how to approach uh, the story today. And it is, I think, going to be one of the most challenging, though interesting pieces of broadcasting I've ever done in my entire career. Um, and it is vitally important that all of you listen and I'd really encourage you to take part and share with me via text and by calling in because I've made room for you to call in. I want your input, your feedback about what we're going to discuss today. I'm not doing what I'm about to do to outrage you. I'm doing it because I think we've got to have a real conversation about what is going on in this country and how, who's funding it and who's driving it. Because of, uh, as I've said for some time, the issue of ethnicity and race and division within our society uh, has not been talked about properly for some time. But it is the issue that concerns, I think, most of us most of the time. And there is a reason for that. There is a revolution underway and we have two wildly divergent views of our society and particularly our history. And I guess who wins that battle of ideals is going to determine what sort of country we are in the future. An ethno-state with different levels of citizenship, responsibility and rights based on the colour of your skin or your whakapapa, your, you know, where you come from. Or a true democracy that has one person with equal uh, rights under the law and equal rights in a democracy and a meritocracy, which does not judge people by what's between their legs but or what colour their skin is, but more what is between their ears. All right, so be ready, and I'm going to have to say it, be ready to be outraged. But I want you to be ready to think, really think, about the very challenging information we're going to put forward to you. Now, let me first say, I wouldn't have known about this, any of this, had it not been for a woke interview that Michelle Duff did in uh, Stuff, which also published the information you're about to hear. No other radio station could pay what you're about to hear without uh, breaching the silly uh, Broadcasting Standards Authority. But, of course, we're not bound by that. But I read uh, an interview by Michelle Duff with a New Zealand poet called Tuisata Avia. She is of European and Pacific Island descent, which seems important to her. Um, she is around in her mid to late 50s, though she's just a woman of, of a certain age. Uh, and she is a poet who has won plenty of, or been given plenty of grants by essentially government-funded organisations. So her name is Tui Sata Avia. She is an angry woman, judging by Michelle Duff's interview, and maybe a little crazy on my assessment of Michelle Duff was giving me an accurate view of her. But boy, do the current government love her. She is a member of the New Zealand Order of Merit and she is loved by the liberal left, which is why a collection of her poems, uh, a collection of her poems are being dramatised for the stage at this year's Auckland Arts Festival. Um, and we'll get back to who funds and supports the Auckland Art, Arts Festival in a moment. So Tui Sata Avia is a poet. She is an artist. So what you are about to hear is her art. And because I believe in freedom of speech, I don't think the following poem should be banned, but I think we have the freedom of speech to discuss it. So here is one of the, I think, three poems upon which a dramatic presentation is going to be made at the Auckland Arts Festival. And this is Tui Sata Avia herself, reading a poem looking back at the 250th anniversary of Captain James Cook's arrival in New Zealand. James Cook's arrival in New Zealand. Hey James, yeah, you, in the white wig and that big endeavour 
sailing the blue, blue ocean like a big asshole. Fuck you, bitch. James, I heard someone shoved a knife right up into the gap between your white ribs at Kealakekua Bay. I'm gonna go there, make a big makahiki luau, cook a white pig, feed it to the dogs and fuck you up, bitch. Hey James, it's us. These days we're driving around in SUVs and looking for you. All white men like you, who might be thieves, or rapists, or kidnappers, or murderers, yeah, or any of your descendants, or any of your incarnations, cause you know, a hey, bitch, we're gonna fuck you up. Tonight, James, it's me, Leilani, Danielle, and a car full of brown girls. We find you on the corner of the Justice Precinct. You've got another woman and a headlock, and I've got my father's pig hunting knife in my fist and we're coming to get you. Sailing around in your resolution, your friendship, your discovery, and your fucking free love. Watch your ribs, James. Cause I'm coming with Kalani Opu, Kane Kapolei, Kanaina, Keawe Opala, Kula Ili Moku, who is a god, and Nua'a, who is king with a knife. And then, James, then we're gonna fuck you up for good, bitch. Take a moment. Uh, to just take all that in, and I'm sorry in some ways I had to play that, but we have to confront what's happening in this country. So that was a poem about Captain James Cook, written and read, indeed, there by Tui Sata Avia. It is a work of art, according to some, and as I believe in freedom of speech, I have to say she's got the right to write that and read that. And if people want to call it art, you can call it art. And I believe in art and I believe in free speech. Um, here's another interpretation. Even under our current hate speech laws, that qualifies. And you got to remember back to what we just heard. It wasn't about, in a historical context, about James Cook. It painted a picture of, uh, of a group of young Polynesian girls in a car looking for white men to kill and possibly eat. That's what that work of art says. It was an incitement to murder and uh, based on race. And I don't think you can interpret it any other way. But let's say I believe in free speech. And I do, but even under the current hate speech laws, that is actionable. I guess it gets away with it uh, because it is art. Uh, it is being part of or it's going to be incorporated into a performance piece of art at the Auckland Festival. Now, as I've said, Tuisata Avia is fated by the Liberal left. She is an order. She has the order of merit of New Zealand. Um... And who do you think is paying for her to write that poetry? Who do you think supports her? Um, 
Well, in some irony, I guess we do. The descendants of that white pig, James Cook. And the government, based on the Westminster system and the system of taxation that we practice, that's actually what supports Tui Sata Avia, who I might add, in my personal opinion, is mentally unwell or at least needs to go and see someone about her anger issues. And it's a free country of free speech, and I'm, I'm allowed to say that. So we have this piece of art, this piece of poetry, these words, that in an open and democratic society, anyone should be allowed to speak, even at the risk of offending someone like me. And if that was what you set out to do, Tui Sata, mission accomplished on a grand scale. And yes... I am offended, but that doesn't mean I think I should shut you down. If you wanted to provoke some debate with your art, let's get into it. And I would invite you, if you are listening, to ring in. I'd love to have a conversation with you that didn't involve you invoking the idea of a young group of Polynesian women cruising town in a four-wheel drive looking to kill me. I'm happy to have a conversation with you about your anger issues, about the fact that you need to build a pretty big bridge and get over your, your inferiority complex. Um, I haven't written a script for this because I knew what I wanted to say and I hope and you're all, the texts are already pouring in and the lines are open right now on 0800 332283. Um, let's have a wee break because I'm now I'm going to give you the second part of the story which I suspect will outrage you even more. We are discussing discussing a piece of poetry, believe it or not. It's not the art show. A piece of poet, uh, poetry by Tui Sata Avia, a Pacific Island woman in her mid-50s who has had the support of the taxpayer and the government for most of her life and is presenting uh, a poem we've just had her read on air, or she's, we've had played a recording of it. And I'll just give you perhaps the line I find most offensive. Um, we're driving around in SUVs looking for you, or white men like you, who might be thieves or rapists or kidnappers or murderers. Yeah, or any of your descendants or any of your incarnations, cause you know, a hey, bitch, we're gonna F you up. Tonight, James, it's me. And I cannot read that. And I'm sure the race relations conciliator and the police and Crown Law couldn't read that as anything but an incitement to murder and violence against people based on their gender and the colour of their skin. But it's art. So we're tolerant. And you can say that. But who's paying for this? Who is paying for this poem to be adapted into a dramatic performance at this year's Auckland Festival? Well, the Auckland Festival clearly knows the content of this and is happy to proceed with the performance. I, can, I can't believe I'm telling you this. The Governor-General of New Zealand is the patron of the Auckland Festival. Dame Cindy Cairo is the, is the patron of the Auckland Festival. She happens to be a Pacific Island woman. Oh, sorry, I mean, a woman of colour. Okay. That's neither here nor there. Who else plays for the Auckland Festival? A thing called Foundation North. It is a, I think, more than a billion dollars it has in its coffers, Foundation North. It was created, it is a, a, a public charitable trust uh, established with the proceeds of the sale of the public share of Auckland Savings Bank more than 30 years ago. And with that, the government, internal Department of Internal Affairs, set up a charitable trust that has done a hell of a lot of good work over the years. Handed out hundreds of millions of dollars in community grants to all sorts of diverse groups, like surf life-saving, like people who do music therapy, uh, therapy and work with the disabled. It looks like a really good organisation. But the funding... And on the website, when I look at the promo for the Auckland Art Festival and this particular thing, uh, Foundation North is part of it, part of the funding. And it's a government-run charity. And I hate to tell you this, but 
The trustees of Foundation North are appointed by the Minister of Finance and the entire trust is overseen by the Minister of Internal Affairs or the Ministry of Internal Affairs. At present, the Minister of Internal Affairs is Karen McNulty and the Minister of Finance is Grant Robertson. So the buck on this is passed through the trustees of Foundation North to the government. The government paid for the dissemination of the, poet, the poem, and I challenge anyone to come in and say, I challenge anyone to say they are not outraged at that and they don't find it offensive. Maybe that's good art, but it's publicly funded art. And I believe it's publicly funded art that can do nothing other, and I'm exercising my freedom of speech, but so division and racist tension in this country, racial tension in this country. Now, uh, we're going to put the, that, uh, I can't believe I'm saying, we're going to put that poem, inverted columns, uh, up on our website later today. And I want to have a conversation though. I believe in freedom of speech. I believe Tuisata Avia has the freedom to write that poem with all its anger and its vitriol and its reverse racism. She's got a right. And I guess she's got a right to call it art. But she doesn't have a right to take public funds and the government doesn't have the right without my permission to publish and promote crap like that. I expect better and I expect more and I expect public accountability for public funds. And if she wants to sell that privately or find people who pay and go and see it, knock yourself out, sister, that's freedom of speech. But racial hate funded by the government and promoted by the government is another thing entirely.